so because we don't need any sample plan. Speaker of today, Dr. Emmanuel Claude from uh, Waters Cork Corporation, of course. Um, she's a scientist at Waters and she's a specialist for imaging applications. So I guess that uh, she will, she will uh, cover an area of lipidomics that we didn't touch today, meaning uh, uh, imaging techniques uh, that involve some desorption from the solid phase, like MALDI and DZ, things like this. And since uh, we all know how powerful these approaches can be, particularly coupled with uh, ion mobility, is, as, you, as you know, is one of the assets of uh, Waters instruments, I guess that we are all curious to hear about uh, uh, Lipidomic solution proposed by Waters in this uh, in this area. So, please go ahead with your presentation, Emmanuel. Thank you. Thank you, Andrea. Um, so let me share my screen. Can you see my screen? Yeah, we see. It. Yeah, can you see? It? Yes, we do. Yeah. Okay. So thank you for the uh, the uh, invitation uh, for the for this meeting. So I'm a consultative scientist at Waters, um, and today I'm going to talk about mass spectrometry imaging for lipidomics and some of the new approaches that we have um, that we have done for for um, uh, for imaging. So. What, what is imaging? So mass spec imaging allows the uh, spatial localization and distribution of a molecule from a surface directly. So in contrast to traditional lipidomics MS profiling techniques, such as LC, LCMS, the tissue is not disrupted and combined or homogenized. Um, so we have the molecular information directly from, from the sample. Um, and in contrast with other imaging techniques that are not mass spec based, such as radio label or fluorescence, um, MSI really is a label free technique. So it's unbiased, it's, it can be untargeted or can be targeted. We really image thousands of, uh, of molecules in one experiment with different range of molecules, uh, going from a small molecule to lipids to peptide to protein, sometimes in the same, in the same experiments. But really, um, MSI is not going to solve everything, it's really complementary to other mass spec techniques and other um, molecular, uh, sorry, structural imaging techniques. So mass spec imaging started with secondary analyzation mass spec techniques, so SIMS, um, back in 1980, I think it was. Um, but really, it's with MOLDI that this uh, technique has been really expanded within, within the mass spec um, community. Um, and really, um, you know, within the last 10, 15 years, uh, ambient ionization techniques such as DESI um, has also been implemented for mass spec imaging. So what is the kind of spatial resolution that we can achieve with mass spec um, imaging? So really, we are going, um, you know, to image tissue to organ type of, uh, type of sample. We are not doing subcellular. Um, so really, you know, other than the mass spec imaging uh, techniques have really improved in terms of spatial resolution, um, going now down to, you know, five microns with certain techniques. Um, what we've got to think about when we are talking about spatial resolution here is that it takes, it can take a long time to acquire data, um, you know, and, and mass spec imaging data, and, you know, it's exponential with the number of pixels, so the lower your pixel is, the more pixels you're going to acquire and the longer it's going to take. And because it's an area, you know, it's exponential. So if your magical question really can be answered at 200 micron, for example, it's no point to acquire your data at 20 micron because it's going to take 100 times longer and the data is going to be much bigger. So here today, I'm going to focus essentially on desorption electrosporization, so DESI. Um, for this, for this talk. So what is DESI? So you have a, a primary charge droplets that are uh, bombarded onto a surface. And within the, the liquid pool, we then extract molecule um, and with the velocity of the spray, then secondary charge droplets are ejected from the surface and are captured within the uh, MS um, uh, atmospheric inlet tube to go into, into the mass spec, okay? 
So this technique is, can be non-destructive depending on the solvent conditions and the spray uh, parameters. Um, so because we don't need any sample prep, uh, we can, can take the tissue directly from, uh, from the minus 80, for example, and then let it defrost and analyze it. So it's kind of more compatible compared to other techniques like MULDI with histopathic workflow. Um, it's really been um, uh, worked on with uh, small molecules such as lipid and endogenous or exogenous metabolites uh, and pharmaceutical compounds. Sorry. So here is a workflow for uh, a mass spec imaging, but there's the imaging experiment workflow. Okay, so typically we get the sample uh, from a cryostar, so the sample needs to be frozen and needs to be sectioned. Um, as thin as it can be, so around 10 to 50 micron. Uh, with DESI compared to MOLDI, for example, the thickness can, um, can be a bit more, can be bigger, and is, uh, DESI is more tolerant to this, okay? One of the things that to make sure with, with the mass spec imaging in general is to make sure that the section that is going to be analyzed doesn't have any OCT uh, material uh, in contact with it because that is a polymer that ionized really well by MOLDI or DESI and can have a, a, a bad effect on, on your analysis, okay? After this, when the section is on the glass slide, we then use our HDI software, so high definition imaging software to define um, the acquisition and imaging parameter. So we have currently four mass spec where we can do uh, um, DESI imaging, um, which is the benchtop Zivo G2 XS. We have our core um, research grade Synlab XS, uh, which has a immobility, and also we can have multi source in it. Um, we have then these two select series um, that um, mass spec that have been launched in the last two years. So we've got the cyclic IMS, where only DESI is available and recently launched the MRT, which has the MOLDI and DESI. Once the data is acquired for any of these platform, then the data is processed and can be visualized again with HDI software. So we use exactly the same software for each of the platform. Um, and then typically um, uh, scientists like to compare the uh, molecular information with the structural um, imaging information. So the sections are then um, stains. So the basic um, staining are the ENE, but you can use immunochemistry and really to have a better correlation between the molecular image and the uh, structural image, then we want to do that on the same uh, tissue section, which, which is possible with, uh, with DESI uh, ionization. So recently we've also extended um, the DESI excess um, uh, offering. So Waters is the only, the only company now that can provide commercially uh, DESI um, ionization um, on, on the mass spec. Um, and one of the uh, uh, downfall uh, previously was the fact that it can take a long time to optimize DESI and it's really like people that really know how, what they do and spend a lot of time that can really get a good signal. But we have worked really hard to improve the DESI offering. And one of the things that we've done is to really work on the sprayer and we've launched the High performance sprayer, the HP uh, sprayer, um, which really has now um, have a better uh, spray focus, so we can achieve even smaller uh, pixel size um, uh, resolution uh, for imaging. Um, so now we are going around 20 to, to 50 microns routinely, which is start to really be the same level as what Moldy can achieve. Um, with this sprayer, because of the of the of the spray of the focus, we can get a, a better sensitivity and spatial resolution compared to previous prior. The, the other aspect to this, which is quite important, is really the ease of use of, of the sprayer. So with the fixed geometry of the emitter, which is inside the, uh, inside the cartridge, um, we really now don't have to spend too much time to optimize the spray um, and also to change the, the emitter. Um, really it's a plug and play uh, cartridge that you just um, open, take off, and then pull it back in. So we don't have to, uh, to, uh, to be careful when we put the emitter, which used to be a few silica. The, the other improvement that we've done is really to help with the sensitivity um, even further by um, introducing the uh, transfer line. So it's a heated transfer line. So that is a tube that goes directly from um, into the mass bag that capture the secondary charge droplets, okay? So these, this uh, transfer line can be heated up to 450 degrees. 
Um, and here I'm showing up to 550, but with, with this, what we can do is optimize the temperature to enhance the sensitivity for a specific, particular class of molecules. So we can see that in positive mode, when we look at lipids directly from a liver tissue section, we get an increase that is you know, quite, quite um, limited, really. I would say, you know, between two to five um, times more, really. But like looking at triglyceride from the same, same um, data, then we can have an improvement up to like 35 times. And really, it's in negative mode that is this HDL makes a huge improvement where we can have some lipids that are improved by um, 100, 250 times. So imaging in lipidomics by mass spectrometry has got some limitation because we don't have, uh, obviously, the LC uh, beforehand, you know, to, like has been shown previously, to separate um, lipids, you know, from um, either, you know, by class or by number of carbons, chain, you know, et cetera. Um, also, in positive modes, what we found is that um, it's even more of a complex mixture because we have um, uh, adducts such as potassium and sodium, so that complicates, you know, the, 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 the spectrum even more, okay? So really, you know, we, we found that um, we need immobility to help with the separation of molecules, and I'm, go I'm going to show you, um, I'm going to show you that in a, in, in a minute. For the lipid quantization, you know, we have seen in other talks how, you know, um, there is a lot of tools now that are being developed. Oops, sorry. Um, and what we found is that the, you know, because we don't have this LCA system beforehand, um, and we have directly uh, um, um, the ionization from, from the tissue, we have a different class of, a different number of tools to help with the, um, with the identification and the characterization. So, we can use, you know, the um, um, by using mass having really high mass accuracy, such as what we're going to show, what we're going to show you in, on the DZ MRT. We can get a, a lipid ID based on on the some um, composition, compositions. Um, we also can get um, obviously the molecular lipid ID, um, you know, with low energy CID fragments. Um, and then finally. Um, I'm going to show you in, in the last part of the talk some experiment that we did with Daisy Oz ID to help with the characterization of the uh, structural specificity of the lipid ID, so the double uh, bond assignments as well as the SN position assignments. So, very quickly, um, the Select Series MRT. So, the Select Series MRT is a next generation um, of, of uh, time of flight, which is a multi reflecting um, time of flight technology. So. Um, as you can see here on this uh, video, we, we have expanded the time of flight by uh, having time of flight that is around 48 to 50 um, meters, I think, um, which really helps with the um, MS resolution that can go up to 200,000 on a routine um, analysis. And also, um, we have mass accuracy that is, is um, around less than 500 ppb routinely, and this is achieved at old scan speed up to 10 hertz, okay? Um, so we get really good um, high quality MS and MS, MS um, data. And one of the things that is very important in imaging is the fact that the data uh, for size is really, really small. So um, on, this, um, tech, on this mass spec, you can have Daisy and Moldy. Um, and just to show you here, one of the, uh, um, Advantages of this uh, of this uh, mass spectrometer is that compared to any other tough on on the, on the, on the market, the the two the over two hundred thousand MS resolution is probably one of the highest that can be achieved. But if we compare with more like uh, mass spec, which are like Orbitrap, um, you know th these um, trap devices are really um, dependent on the speed of acquisition. Um, and here I'm showing. Um, you know, the, the MS resolution depending on the mass and the, and the speed. And we can see that because we have uh, uh, the same MS resolution at any speed up to 10 hertz, that, um, you know, the, the um, MRT for acquisition above two hertz really, um, really kind of uh, um, are higher than, than uh, the, the orbit trap. This can be also visualize um, within, uh, within the mass spectrum. So this is a peak that, is an experiment that was done from a liver tissue section, and we're looking at the PC341 potassiated, so M over Z798. We can see that with this, we can have fan structure, isotope fan structure. Um, and 
when if we simulate this with an orbitrap uh, uh, instruments, we can see that within uh, after two pretty much yeah within what between one and two um, sec, uh, scan per second, then the fan structure and information is lost. So um, here is another lipid that um, was analyzed from a, um, a brain tissue. And we can see here that we, we achieve, um, you know, the, two, the over 200,000 uh, within uh, in the MS experiment, within the MS um, imaging experiments from DESI, but also the important thing here is the level of, of uh, confidence that we have from the mass accuracy, which are, from the most abundant lipids uh, below, largely below 500 uh, ppb. So the, the, the thing here, which is important, is not just the identification, it's obviously the, 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 the possibility to actually differentiate peaks that are really close in mass. So we have in this data set, you know, um, of, I would say uh, tens of, of example where the, um, we can have uh, lipids that are less than, than 100 millidalton really. Um, because this, this data has been acquired in imaging mode, we can have a good confidence in identification. And also we can uh, um, look at the iron image for this specific, um, the specific lipids. And we can see in this example that we have you know, really different um, distribution within, within the, the brain. Okay, <clears throat> if we had a lower MS resolution, so I think less than 50,000, uh, we would not be able to differentiate these two, these two lipids, and we will have this composite image that um, you can see here on the, on the right-hand side. So another, um, another mass spec that can be used to help with, the, you know, the, 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 to be able to differentiate um, lipids that are really close in mass is within the cyclic IMS. So, uh, for those who are not familiar, familiar with it, um, we use ion mobility, and instead of having the ions going through the mass spec and through the ion mobility in one line, what we do is that within, um, within the um, ion mobility device, we have a, a, a cir circle where the ions can go around and around and around, okay? So as more passes you go around the cyclic, more limited the mass range or the focusing of the, of the separation needs to be. Otherwise, you've got some wraparound um, effect, okay? So in this example, what I did is that I acquired, again, the uh, mouse brain, um, and I wanted to compare the single pass versus multiple pass, okay? So with these, the cyclic uh, IMS, the um, uh, IMS resolution has increased compared to the synapse um, IMS resolution from 40 to 65, okay? But also, we can really then increase the separation of, um, of ions uh, that are really close in mass, okay? So in this example, we have here, uh, so we have the same, pretty much the same spectrum, spectra between the one pass and the seven pass across the whole tissue. And we can see here within the, um, the 2D plot where we've got a uh, MOVZ in that direction and drift time in that direction. When we look at the lipid region here, you know, we can see that we've got a nice line, trend line between and the lipid region, okay? And when we optimize the number of paths to only separate the uh, lipids that are between 700 and 900 Dalton, we can really see that we are stretching um, the separation for the, on the IMS dimension for the lipid region, okay? So if we look at the um, lipids at 810.6 and we extract the mobilogram for this particular peak in a single pass, we can see that we've got a nice um, sharp peak in the IU mobility dimension with a, a, a mobility times of um, 24.5 milliseconds, okay? Because this is acquired in imaging mode, we can look at the um, uh, ion image for, for this particular um, lipid, okay? And when we then do the seven passes, okay, we can see that we can starting to see in IU mobility that we're having now two peaks, okay? And again, um, within the, the processing of the data, we can process um, in MZ dimension and also in drift time dimensions. We have two different um, uh, ion image, and we've got for the slowest one in the, uh, in the uh, device, um, this particular ion image. And then for this, the faster one, sorry, the first one was the fastest one, now it's the slowest one. We can see that the distribution is completely different, okay? And they actually completely color colorized. So 
So, um, you know, without the eye mobility, we would not be able to differentiate uh, these two particular lip, um, lipids. Now, within the eye mobility device, after we have an, uh, a fragmentation, um, a collision cell, which means that when we fragment after the eye mobility, the parent and the fragment have got the same um, drift time, okay, which is what I've done here. We call that a transfer fragmentation. So when we look at the transfer fragmentation of A10, we have again, and this one was done uh, manually, we have again these two peak in mobility modes, and we can then select within the 2D plot specific region of the 2D plot to recreate MSMS fragments, uh, so MSMS um, uh, spectra, uh, which is what I'm showing here. So in um, green, which is the fastest one into the amenity device, we have uh, a lipids that has um, a fragment ion, which is when, uh, 184, which means that it's going to be protonated. And looking at lipid maps for the identification, we have identified the uh, 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 PC18024. Um, and then for the, the one that is the slowest one, well, we've got the uh, diagnostic ion 147, which indicates that is a uh, so the ATID, uh, lipids, we've identified it as a PC180081. And again, you, know, you can see the difference here in distribution. So actually to differentiate these two, if we didn't have a mobility, we would need a mass spec um, that has a resolving power at least 338,000. So here I show you that how uh, the MRT can really help with the um, identification based on mass accuracy and the uh, high MS resolution and how the mobility can also help with molecules that are either even closer in mass or completely isobaric, okay? Um, one of the work that we did um, two years ago, last year, sorry, with uh, Professor Stephen Langley from QIT is to look at how we can use OZID, which is a technique that he's developed directly uh, within the mass spec with the uh, high pressure uh, mass spectrometry and how that can be used for this um, MS to visualize the double bond position on the isomers of isolipids, of oh, sorry, and phospholipids. Mm -hmm. So what is OZID? So OZID is a gas phase reaction that um, is between the ozone and the double bonds of the fatty acid chain, okay? So what we have is we have a neutral loss, two neutral loss that indicates the position of the unsaturation. So they've developed a table where we have an aldehyde and Kriegi uh, ions um, that are 16 Dalton difference between the two. So it's actually quite easy to um, uh, identify uh, the two peaks that is related to, um, to the double bond position. And what was really well for actually imaging, MS imaging, is that um, the reaction times varies with the uh, adduct and really sodium and potassium have a very short um, reaction time. So it's ideal for um, for uh, dizzy imaging and also for moldy actually has been, it has been also used for um, um, moldy imaging as well. So within the, um, so this has been implemented on the Synapse right now in my lab, um, but is that we also gonna use it for, uh, for the cyclic, but within, within the, the Synapse excess, uh, what we have is, is um, in the uh, mobility device, we have, like I said, the mobility separation device, but before and after we can have, um, we have a collision cell where we can do CID. So in this case, we get information of the fatty acid and the, uh, the head group of the lipids. The OZID occurs into the amobility separation. So we're not using actually the uh, amobility separation device for this. We're using for the OZID when we get the reaction because that's where um, it happens, okay? So in this case, we can use the double bone position information and we can combine the two. So the CID and the OZID, so we first fragment um, the um, lipid where we lose um, the uh, head group Oh, um, and we um, and then we um, um, have the reaction on the uh, lipid without the, the head growth into the OZID. And this gives the SN connectivity of the acid chain. So here's a, an example, uh, again, from a, mouse, from a mouse brain of a lipid, which is very simple a lipid. It only has one double bond. Uh, yeah, one double bond here. So it's a PC361. Um, we can see the uh, lipids. Uh, 788, and we have an addition of the um, ozone 
Um, so that indicates a number of double bond in a way that could be on this, on this lipid, and we only have one. And then we look at the 16 different between pairs of peaks. So this different here indicates that the double bond is in position nine. And this here indicates that it's in position seven. And we can see here that they have really different um, ion images because all this data has been acquired um, in Im basic imaging mode. Okay, so this is really a simple one. When we look at um, 810, you can see that it is much more complex. Okay, um, so again, we have the um, actually twice the addition of, uh, of ozone which indicates there is at least one lipid that has multiple double bonds uh, within, uh, within the data. So again, we look at the 16, so from the most intense, um, we have here the um, uh, position nine, we've got this ion image there, then we've got position seven, we've got this image there, this ion image here. So these are for a PC361 sodiated. So similar to what we've seen for the protonated version. But we also have at the bottom a lot of um, small peaks that are different in 16 uh, Dalton, and we can see that there is actually four. So there is a lipid that also have four different double bonds and uh, a position six, nine, 12, and 15. Okay, And when we combine the intensity or with the composite image of these uh, all different peaks, we can recreate this ion image in blue. Um, and then we can see that they all have very different distribution within them. Um, within the brain. So what we did here is using the same tissue section, we also then did a, a second experiment where we did CID only um, MS imaging acquisition to look at the fatty acid assignments. In this case, we did the fragmentation in a trap um, collision cell, okay? So we can see here that we have a, a diagnostic ion 184, which corresponds to a protonated lipids. And we have also a smaller peak that corresponds to the sodiated um, diagnostic uh, head group ions. Okay, and then for each of those, we can also see the ion image, um, the ion images. Now, as it was described before, the uh, fatty acid assignments of the oh, sorry fatty acid um, uh, fragments are really low in intensity, but because we've acquired throughout the whole imaging. So the whole tissue, sorry, we we can really get quite a good signal to noise on the on this on these fragments and have some idea on the frag on the on the um, distribution of this other than the, the it's quite weak. Okay, so with this, what we identified is that the the red um, um, image corresponds to PC eighteen one eighteen oh, sorry eighteen zero eighteen one as a sodium lipids. Then we have a PC16021 as a sodium lipid as well. And in blue, we have the 18024 as protonated. Okay. Now, as you can see here, I could not um, actually uh, tell which um, fatty acid is um, in position SN1 or SN2. And that's when we then did the third experiment from the same tissue section, again, um, where we uh, did the CID and OSID fragmentation. So again, in the QIT group, um, they have then um, determined for sodiated lipids, what are the diagnostic ions that could give an indication of each uh, of um, the SN1 fatty acid chain attached to the glacial backbone, okay? So here is the spectrum MSM, yeah, the MSMS spectrum that we, we got. We can see that there is some ions that are, um, uh, within within this this table, and again, there is a difference of of, uh, of sixteen here. So um, we can see here I've annotated which acid chain is then uh, linked to the SM1 backbone. Um, and what we did also is to actually look at ratios. So we can see that there is um, the, for example, in the case of the um, of the uh, sixteen zero and twenty one to put the 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 uh, um, protonated that there is both that is attached to the SM1. And actually what was quite um, um, interesting to look at is a ratio between these, uh, between these and look at which, um, uh, what was the difference in, in, in ratio between the white matter and the gray matter. What we found is the SM1 that is 180181 within the white and the gray matter have the same ratio, which is almost that the, um, SM1 18 is uh, at um, 98% or 95%, I think, 
uh, within the brain. However, when we looked at the 16021, we can see that actually in the white matter, the, um, the, the amount of lipids that are SN1, 16, 0 is almost 50%, whereas in the gray matter, um, it went down to 25%. And this is really um, a similar founding to a paper that was published by the um, Professor um, um, Iren's group um, using MOLDI in, the, in, in this case. So I hope I've showed you how um, high resolution mass spectrometry is really needed for mass spec imaging in epidemics, um, how the um, MRT um, with the high MS resolution and the mass accuracy uh, at high speed could really help um, with the um, dif to differentiate uh, lipids that are enclosed in mass, how the cyclic IMS really um, who offers versatility in the type of experiment to separate isobaric and isomer um, isomeric species. Um, and um, this um, new DESI OZID imaging experiment to really give the fatty, set, fatty acid chain assignment on saturation of position um, within the isobaric and isomeric lipids, and also the SN connectivity to the acid chain. And I'd like to thank my colleague at Waters and uh, Professor uh, Stephen Blanksby and uh, Dr. Barrick Podes at uh, QIT, and thank you for your attention. If you have any questions. Thank you very much, Manuel. Um, actually, we do have a question from the audience, from a person that had to leave. So I'm reading the question for, uh, from, for this person. Uh, so the question is, I have a plug and play DAISY system from Prozolia on a Q-Exactive platform Thermo. I would like to know whether some software are available to treat DAISY EMS data. Do you know of any software tools that this person? Uh, well, the problem is that now uh, Prozolia is not a commercializing um, um, DAISY anymore. So we, the, the, there is a software called the uh, um, Pro, um, Omnispray that they used to provide, and that is the only one that I know. Um, we don't provide um, DESI on other mass specs than waters. Um, and, and actually we have uh, improved with the, with the new DESI access source um, for all of the limitation that um, Prosolia DESI source had. But I'm afraid you'll have to buy waters. You will need to buy a water system. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> OK, any, any other question for Emmanuel? Um, sorry, I, I have actually a more general question within the in data. It was a very interesting talk. This is Hania speaking. Yeah. Um, the, the last bits, they were very interesting. And to my knowledge, phosphatidylcholine, the main ion detected is, is um, M plus H. And in your data, you see majority M plus NA. So have you looked to see if you detect them as protonated as well as the sodium? Yeah. So, in the, so, so that is what uh, actually a lot of my lipidomics colleagues that use only LC, they really struggle when I come to see them to show them like some um, fragmentation of lipids because they're not used to see potassiated and sodiated. Can it be a false positive different. in this case? Pardon. Um, can it be a false positive that it's not a PC uh, in this see, case if, because you, you should at, be able yeah, to detect it, both species? No, yeah. You see, if you look at uh, most of the MOLDI and DESI or um, uh, Im imaging, so that's what mm -hmm. I'm saying, like imaging data, imaging paper, you're going to see that a lot of it is potassiated and, and um, um, so the 80s. In the example that I showed, uh, so actually here, so this is the PC361 that is actually protonated, and yeah. the next one is so the and actually have also the example for potassiated, but I thought that was a bit too much. So we actually have a, a lot of um, a lot of uh, lipids that actually ionized in, in different um, in with different salts. Um, and actually, there is some people are looking to have to force um, the uh, cation to be either lithium, for example, or potassiated, you know, like to actually help to less dilute the, the, the signal, really. But so you, certain not. ones, what you're saying is that you see them either this or that, but you don't detect them both. You know, you detect them both. 
Okay, so I said, gotcha. but people are forced uh, are looking at some some uh, sample prep methods, especially with moldy, to actually force to actually have only uh, uh, proteinated or to wash to only have um, proteinated or this kind of thing to, gotcha. to help to decomplex the the, the bacteria. Yeah. yeah, no, it is definitely definitely that, and that and that's why when we do MSMS, we see these dynastic ions that are around for 147 for sodiated and 163 for potassiated. Um, we don't see the 184 when it's only this, this um, uh, adduct. And I was surprised, if I may finish, I was surprised to see one of your MSMS specs, right? The 184, you had to magnify practically to find it. But as it, for a PC, it's usually like it shoots out. <laughs> Um, what? Uh, yeah, one of the spectra. I think uh, probably it was right next to it, and I missed it. But there was one where it was magnified. Um, yeah. Well, so yeah. So one of the reason is that if the so it might be the one for that. If the uh, because it's multiple lipids. Yes. Um, yeah, this one. So no, the one is yeah. No, no, no. The, the magnifying is only within uh, within the fatty acid fragments. Oh, okay. Gotcha. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. 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 Oh, thanks. You're welcome. Okay. Thank you again, Manuel. Thank you. I think then.